Welcome to the Lovestead. Hello, welcome back to Lady Lovestead Reads. I'm Jessica. This is the vlog. Hope you enjoy. If you've never seen one of my vlogs before, I try to vlog in a way that is sort of like you've just come to my house and we're hanging out and spending the week together. Um, so I do a combination of lifestyle and book stuff in my vlogs. And so welcome. I'm glad that you're here. If you're back, happy to see you. So what am I reading this week? I think I'm going to DNF a book to start. <laughs> so... Uh, the first week of May I started to read Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. This is book two in the Brutal Birthright series and I started it the first week of May for the Mafia readathon that some booktubers were hosting. Their information is below and I just couldn't get into it. So this is like a Beauty and the Beast retelling only Mafia romance version and the Beauty and the Beast notes were hit so hard and so obviously like she calls him the Beast. He has a castle. Like I don't know. I wanted that to be a little bit more subtle. I wanted it to be her own take on it rather than just like so exact, I guess. And I don't love the characters. Like the beast is like so stereotypical mafia guy. Like, ooh, I don't feel anything for others. All I want to do is revenge and kill. And like the girl is like so innocent and and I don't, I don't know what's happening in the world and I'm just, she's like a fairy princess. It's not giving me dark romance vibes. It's kind of similar to the first book in the series that I read, which is Brutal Prince, where it felt like a rom-com with elements of dark romance in it, more than a dark romance. Um, I'm not getting dark romance from this one either. I want my characters to be more broken and complex when I read a dark romance. So I just, I wasn't digging it. And I put it down and it's been a couple weeks now and I've had zero interest in going back to it. So that to me means it's time to DNF. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with this series now because this series is on my Serious About Series Challenge videos up there. And so book one was a three star for me. Book two is a DNF. It's not going great so far. Um, I will go ahead and try out book three. But if book three isn't like a banger, I'm probably going to be done with the series. So I was trying to figure out what to read next and it is still AAPI month so I'm going to read an installment or a volume of the Promised Neverland manga series that I've been working on. I really love this series. It's about these orphans who escape an orphanage that is not what it's meant to be. It's totally different. It is not a safe space. This is like very much a dystopian horror <laughs> series. Um, and it's about survival and I am on volume 14 and I think there's 20 volumes in the series. So slowly making my way through. This is, um, the story is done by Kayu Shirai and the art is done by Posuka Demizu and it is translated from Japanese. Manga volumes usually take me like a day to get through and so I'm trying to pick out my next book but I think what I will be reading is actually Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This is a book, it's a classic that they make everyone in high school read and they did not make me read it in high school. And it's a book that is pretty ubiquitous. I feel like most people know what it's about without having to go read it, but I wanna read it because earlier in the month, I guess actually last month for Spring Fling a Wing, my friend Angel and I read The Thriller Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins and that's about this group of people who's stranded on an island and all these like intense things happen and I really liked that. I liked those stranded on an island vibes and so I want to read this. I feel like it's a classic that I need to have under my belt that I need to have read because everybody else has read it. Um, and it's really sounding interesting and good to me right now. So I think I'm going to pick this up after I finish my manga. Um, the plan for today is I am filming and editing for booktube. I've got to edit my April wrap up and then I think I'm going to try to film a tag video. And then I have to log into work for a while. I need to do water changes on the fish tanks and... 
that's all I really have planned. We'll kind of see where the day takes me from there. <laughs> I did some reading sprints until pretty late at night till like midnight and I finished Lord of the Flies and I loved this book it was like deliciously disturbing and so thrilling and so tense and just such an interesting study on human behavior and when I read this I think of the Stanford prison experiment a little bit um, if that is an area of psychology that interests you, though the Stanford prison experiment has now been sort of debunked. It really, that experiment, I feel like, really connects to what this story is about. Like, wow, I can't believe that they make middle schoolers read this book. I mean, I'm not about book banning or anything like that. I am for age appropriate literature. And I think that if I had read this in middle school, I don't know that I would have understood it. I wouldn't have appreciated it. Even in high school, I probably wouldn't have liked it. But as an adult, this is like one of the best books ever. <laughs> like, it was so good. I really enjoyed this classic. And it looks like William Golding was a prolific writer. So I might see if I can read some of his other stuff. But I can totally see why Lord of the Flies is such a revered book and why there are so many rewrites of it. Because this is ripe for material for rewrites and retellings and references and so on and so forth. If you're a fan of thrillers, you should really read this book. This is like if I could say a book that I've read that I feel like is the birthplace of the modern thriller. I would say probably Lord of the Flies would be right up there as one of the contributors to the genre. It really does read like a thriller and there are some dark parts, a lot of dark parts, some graphic parts, heartbreaking parts. The characters are really well done. It's tense. Um, the only thing that I struggled with here and there was the descriptions of the island. I felt like I couldn't quite see in my mind's eye what was going on. <laughs> like he kept describing like pink rock and granite and castle rock and I couldn't really get a clear p picture in my head what that actually looked like based on his descriptions but that could be a me thing um, and you know I might have just missed something along the way and overall I really 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 enjoyed this so much. I feel like 
if you didn't read it as a kid, read it as an adult. And I think even if you did read it as a kid, read it as an adult. Because I feel like everything they make us read, all the classics they make us read in high school and whatever, we're just not old enough to appreciate them. Like, and at least when I was in high school, everybody had like an attitude about school, right? So I feel like if you're, if, if you're forced to read it, you're automatically not going to like it. And you're just not mature enough at that age to really grasp these classics. So like in adulthood, I've reread like, um, oh, what is it? F. Scott Fitzgerald's books. What's the most... The Great Gatsby. I reread The Great Gatsby. That was one we had to read in high school that I reread as an adult and had a completely different experience with as an adult. John Steinbeck books we had to read in high school and then I read it as, as an adult and had a completely different experience with them. So like you might have had a certain experience with this in your younger years, um, but give it another shot as an adult because wow, did I love, love, love reading this book. I do need a palette cleanser after that, so I'm going to read the next installment of The Promised Neverland, number 15, and then I think I'm going to pick up a thriller that I have checked out on Kindle Unlimited called The Butterfly Garden, because I'm in the mood for a thriller, and I'm trying to get through this um, list of books that I have checked out on KU. If you want to see my video on what I currently have checked out on KU, it's right there. So. I'm going to read this and I think I'm going to pick up the butter butterfly garden next. It's a rainy day. Not much going on here. I I got tickets to see Harry Styles next tour. So Brendan and I got tickets to see his show. I'm not going to tell you when or where because, you know, internet safety and all that. But I'm very excited about it. <laughs> It has taken about three years for Miss Maggie to be comfortable on the bed with me. I think that the other family she was with before I adopted her didn't like her on the furniture and were pretty like assertive with her about it because anytime that I would like let her on the furniture she'd get really anxious and get down right away like she was in trouble. Um, but now I think she's fully embraced <laughs> this bed sleep in life. Haven't you, honey? Yeah, you ready for sleep? Let's go to sleep. You're such a good girl. I love you. Yeah. Morning. Uh, Brandon and I are going to go get Starbucks and go to the library. And what did you just ask? I asked what you were going to get at the library. Mm -mm. I wanted to go to the library book nook, which is their little uh, used bookstore that they have. And I have to return a bunch of books. Mm. That's about it. What are you going to get at the library? I don't know. I'll check out the book nook too. What are you going to get at Starbucks? Um, probably a mocha. Mmm. He's a mocha guy. Mm. That is so cute. I've got a little book haul to share with you. I didn't get any footage at the library. I forgot to bring my phone in with me, whatever. But I returned a couple of books that I read. One of them was Lord of the Flies. I returned Very Bad People by Kit Frick. I returned Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. Uh, and I have vlogged about both of those and Lord of the Flies in this one. So 
Um, while we are at the library, I always like to go to their little bookstore called The Book Nook. And it like is a store full of books that people donate or that are withdrawn from the library collection. And they sell them for incredible prices. So I like to check that out pretty regularly. And I found some gems today. So first, I got If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, by Laura Joff Numeroff and Felicia Bond. I couldn't resist this. This was a favorite of mine when I was a kiddo. Got it for 50 cents. I have, I don't have any children of my own, but I have friends who have kids. So I feel like if they're ever over here, um, for whatever reason, I'm trying to build a little toy chest and a little bit of a library for the kiddos so that they have something to do if they're ever at my house. So this is going into my, my children's library. Next, I got Doll Bones by Holly Black. I was enticed by the title of this. The title sounds like eerie and spooky. I think this is a middle grade. I don't know what it's about, but then I picked it up and I saw it was by Holly Black. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I don't know what this is about, but it sounds spooky. It sounds gothic. It sounds eerie. I've heard a lot about the writer. The cover? Look at that cover. I mean, I might read this pretty soon here. Because, ugh, it's just, I don't know. I'm enticed. I don't really want to read the synopsis. I kind of want to go in blind on this one. This was 25 cents. <clears throat> Next, I picked up the duology, Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. And from what I know about this, all that I know is that it's like a grimdark fantasy, which like sign me up. And Mayana from Mayana Reads talks about this a lot. And I trust Mayana. And I just, this just sounds like something I would like. And this was... This was 50 cents. This was $1. So, I mean, for that price, coming home with me. I think this is a duology. It might be a trilogy. I don't really know. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. Next, I've never heard of this book before, but it sounded pretty intriguing. It's called A Good Indian Wife by Anne Sherian. This looks to be like a contemporary literary fiction, and Anne Sherian was born and raised in India, um, so it's an own voices story. This could be really good for like AAPI month next year, or whenever, or I know Smirti always has the Lit with Indian Lit readathon. I think she does that, I want to say in March. I don't know, but this I think will fit a lot of readathon prompts for different things. So it appears to be about um, a man who who's from India who marries a white woman in the U.S. and then he travels back to India for what does he go back for? Oh, he goes back to India to visit his grandfather who's sick, and while he's there, he ends up in this forced marriage to an Indian woman. And I guess the Indian woman is supposedly, like, really demure and passive and all of that, supposedly. But when he actually spends time with her, finds out she's quite the opposite of that. It sounds interesting. It sounds interesting to me. So I did pick that up, um, and it was one dollar. And then the last book that I got was my girl, Tess Gerritsen. You know, she's one of my favorite authors. She's like an autobi author of mine. I have all of her Rizzoli and Isles books, but I'm now trying to collect all of her standalones. And every time I go to the book nook, they have a standalone that I don't yet have. So this is one of the standalones, The Shape of Night. I do have this on my Kindle, but you know, <laughs> hardback, $1.00. I wasn't going to pass it up. So that was my book haul. It was a good haul. I'm really happy with that. Um, I spent less than $10 on all of those. So like, score. Okay, so I have been reading the thriller I was telling you about, The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. So what this is about is this man collects girls. And he tattoos their back with a butterfly. They live in like this compound where they all like have a room and that kind of thing. They get fed regularly. Like they are taken care of, but he's like a psychopath. 
and he does things with these girls and I'm not totally sure yet what exactly he does with them because the book hasn't really said it's kind of hinted that oh he does terrible things um, so that's kind of the premise of this and what has happened is the police have raided the compound and they've rescued all of these girls and now they are speaking to one of the girls specifically Maya in a police interview and this is how we're getting the story told to us. So it rotates between third person omniscient, omniscient where we're getting the perspective of like the police officers and sort of the outsider view of the conversation that's being had. Um, and it is a slightly limited point of view. It tends to focus more on Victor, the main investigator, and like how he's perceiving things, but it's not his first person POV. It's a third person POV. And then it rotates and we get first person POV from Maya, who is the woman who is being interviewed. And so it goes back and forth between those two POVs to tell the story. And one thing to know about this book is there are no chapters. So if you do not like reading books without clear chapters, you might not like this, but it does have specific like breaks in it. So there's a specific break between each POV. So we'll have like a POV for a while from the third person limited omniscient, whichever it is, and then there'll be a break and then it'll be first person and then a break and then third person and then break. So you can still break up your reading like that it's not like it's just one long narrative. There are breaks in it. There's just not specific chapters. So if that bothers you, you should know that in advance. I am enjoying the story so far. I find it intriguing. I My interest is peaked. Um, the writing is fine. The character development is good. So I don't really have anything negative to say about it. I'm not super far into it. I'm like 50 pages in, but it's a fairly short book. It's less than 300 pages. So 50 pages is like... Um, I want to say like 25% of the book, maybe. So 50 pages isn't a lot, but it's a lot for this book. <laughs> Math! Who would have thought? Yeah, so this week has been pretty dull, I'll be perfectly honest with you. We are starting summer term at work. And for those of you who don't know, I work in higher education. And um, so the courses that I teach, we just started our summer term. And I teach primarily first term students or like freshmen. And they often need a lot of guidance in the first few weeks. So um, I've just been pretty busy at work, helping out the students, helping them find their groove, helping them get used to everything. So I haven't really had a lot of time to do anything else other than that. I didn't film at all yesterday because yesterday I was basically at work from like 9 in the morning to 11 at night. So um, Thursday didn't exist this week, <laughs> at least not in the vlog. Um, today I technically have the day off work because we have a four day weekend because of the Memorial Day holiday. So I'm technically not supposed to be at work this week, but I do still need to get logged in and to continue supporting my students. So um, we went to the coffee shop and we went to the library and stuff already today. I slept in. I slept in. Nice nice little lie-in today. Um, but yeah, so then I slept in. Then we did the coffee shop in the library. And now I'm going to get logged into work for a while and just do a little bit of work. And then um, I'm going to go to the barn. <laughs> I haven't been to the barn in a few days and I'm missing my horses like crazy. So I'm going to go to the barn and that that's the plan for today. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Toots. Hi, Toots. Hi, Toots. Hello, little. Aggie. Aggie. Where's Doll? Oh, she's flirting with Cowboy today. Both the ladies are in heat. Thank you. Aren't you, Henry? Yep. Hi, Bug Bug. Yes, you're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. Yes. Yes, Bubby. Oh, hello, beautiful nose. Yes. Darn flies. Damn. <laughs> Ma'am. What are you 
think about that? What do you think about that bug? Mm. Yeah. Very beautiful. <laughs> good night. Have a good nap. Mm-hmm. Have a good nap. Love you. Good morning. <laughs> it's actually Tuesday morning and Yesterday I vlogged a lot of like b-roll, but I think that b-roll is going to be in next week's vlog and not this one because um, this one's getting long enough. But on Sunday night I did finish The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison and I got caribou coffee this morning. I hear booktube talk a lot about like Dunkin' Donut coffee and Starbucks coffee. I don't hear a lot of people talk about caribou, so have you all ever had caribou coffee? Do you even have one in your area? Mm. I'm honestly on the fence about it. When I get uh, caribou, <clears throat> there's two different locations in my city, and when I get from one location, I get a migraine every time. And if I get it from another location, I'm fine and I don't get a migraine. So that's a little sus. But I'm kind of on the fence about if I actually like caribou or not. Um, their coffee tastes very, like, syrupy. So I don't know. Do you like it? Let me know. Um, so Sunday night I finished The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. And... Hmm... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it yet. So the characters were really good. I loved the main character, Inara. I thought that she was complex and interesting and just, I related to her and her bluntness and her directness because I tend to be also quite direct in the way that I communicate with people. So I really appreciated Inara. I liked the detectives that she was working with. Now, as for the other butterflies that are at this compound with her, I loved Bliss. Bliss is like hard edges and soft inside kind of person. And the rest of them, I had a little bit of trouble keeping straight. There are so many of them and so many names that get brought up throughout the story that I had trouble, and this could just be a me issue, Others of you might not struggle like I did, but I had trouble keeping track of who was who within the butterfly garden. Um, the gardener himself was interesting. How, I, I won't say that because it will spoil it, but yeah, he was an interesting villain. Um, Desmond was interesting. This book really felt to me a lot like the show The OA. If you've ever seen that show, it's on Netflix. And the OA is very sci-fi. This is not a sci-fi story, but it does have like a captivity narrative like this one does and a couple of like characters that really remind me of the Gardener and of Desmond specifically. And it definitely has those same vibes, the OA vibes. The compound also is really reminiscent of the dollhouse in Pretty Little Liars. So if you like that kind of thing, that captivity narrative, you might really enjoy this because it's heavy on those captivity themes. The atmosphere was really good. I did have some trouble picturing what this garden looked like because there are like a lot of girls that he's keeping captive. So there's gotta be a lot of rooms. And then there's like this big garden with a cliff and a waterfall. And I'm like, this place must be huge. But then it's also like inside another larger greenhouse, I think. And so I was having trouble picturing like the geometry of that space and how that would actually like work. <laughs> because in addition to the rooms, they have like a room where they can get food and a room where he does what he does with the butterflies. And like it's... It was difficult for me to wrap my mind around those logistics and I think that this book had some definite problems with logic and some pretty big plot holes because after I got done reading it I found myself asking the questions that are like well why didn't they or how did that 
or you know what I mean? And some of it just didn't make sense. Didn't make sense when I sat down and really thought about it. Um, I was like, yeah, there's some major plot holes and the twist at the end, I didn't like. I didn't like it at all. It should have stayed untwisted. The book would have been fine without it. So I don't know where this is going to fall in terms of a rating. I have to put it through my cop pile system yet. So you're going to have to watch my May wrap up to figure out what exactly I do rate that. If I have already uploaded my May wrap up, I'll put it up here. If I haven't, it'll be coming soon. So those are my thoughts on The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. Will you like it? So if you like those captivity narratives, if you like character driven stories, and if you can suspend your disbelief on some of the logic, you would probably like it. It is dark and twisty. Check your triggers. Always check your triggers. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. Because the writing itself is very digestible. It's not bad writing. Um, so I would say if you like captivity narratives, if you can handle the dark and twisted, and if you can suspend your disbelief on some of the plot holes and the logic that goes along with the story, I think you would enjoy this. Because when I suspend my disbelief and I don't think too much about it, I did enjoy it. So that's where I land on, on the butterfly garden. I hope that you have enjoyed this vlog and are enjoying me getting back into the YouTubing and the vlogging and the, all the things. And if you have read either of the books that I read this week, what did I even read? Oh, Lord of the Flies and the Butterfly Garden. We're going with insect themes this week, I guess. That's kind of fun. Um, go ahead and let me know down below what you have thought of those two books. If you're planning to read them, if you have any recommendations based on them, because I did enjoy both of them. Lord of the Flies more than the Butter Gar Butterfly Garden, but I did like both of them. And if you just want to let me know that you're here, go ahead and leave any kind of insect emoji in the comments down below. And until next time, make sure that you continue to read good books, drink good coffee, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye! Bye!